Hi, you guys. I uh, wanted to talk about the progress I'm making on research for my novel, Silver Skies 1996 version. Uh, I had, I noticed that Dallas Theological Seminary had a free revelation course, a course on the book of Revelation. And I initially wasn't planning on enrolling because I didn't want to narrow down my research to just Dallas Theological Seminary's interpretation of Revelation. But I noticed that Dr. Stanley Toussaint, who is the professor who teaches the course, that it was somebody posted the course free online. So what I did was I decided to listen to him, you know, while I'm working out. And he really forced me to think through some of my interpretations of Revelation. And you might say, why do you care so much about Revelation? Well, the last part of my novel, like the last 25%, is set in Petra and the nation of Israel during the tribu future seven-year tribulation period. Um, I take the premillennial, pre-tribulation, dispensational uh, interpretation of Bible prophecy. That would be mainly the books of Daniel and Revelation. And um, that's because I've read the Bible from cover to cover hundreds of times, and that is the only interpretation that to me makes sense. <laughs> I mean, if you interpret the Bible literally, literally means that you believe the Bible means what it says when you read it, and it's only a symbol or a metaphor, if it says it's a symbol or a metaphor. So if you interpret the Bible literally, you have to take the pre-tribulation, premillennial view of Bible prophecy. Basically, what, what, that, what that view is, is that you believe there's going to be a rapture before the seven year future seven-year tribulation, the rapture of the church. And, um, and then when the Antichrist signs his covenant with the nation of Israel, that's when the tribulation period time clock goes off. And then you know from that point forward, you've got seven years before the Christ's second coming. The... Uh, uh, and uh, then the second coming occurs, and then you have the 1,000 year reign, and then you have eternity future. So that's pretty much the premillennial pre-tribulation position. There are a lot of variations on that, but because I want my novel to be prophetic, to be as accurate as possible, because I believe that the Lord is going to use it as a tool possibly to win the nation of Israel, at the end of the tribulation when they get saved when the bible prophesies that the entire jewish nation will accept yeshua hamashiach or jesus christ as their messiah at the and that will end the seven-year tribulation when that happens in fact the whole purpose for the seven-year tribulation is for that to happen it's called the time of jacob's trouble so um the reason i decided to enroll in dr two saints course, which is a free Dallas Theological Seminary course, it's because he's, he's bringing up, he's forcing me, he's, he, I really respect him as a professor. He has really done his research on the book of Revelation. Uh, he studied it deeply, I can tell. And like he's made, forcing me to think very deeply and thoroughly about my interpretation of the events in the tribulation and I want to make sure they're accurate. For instance, he believes that all that blood that flows at the Battle of Armageddon, what, you know, when, when you get to the very end of Revelation and the, the Jesus Christ comes to beat up the Antichrist and the false prophets forces at, you know, at Armageddon, he believes that the blood that flows at the Battle of Armageddon occurs after Armageddon. He thinks that's a separate battle where God just destroys all the unsaved on tri tribulation earth right before he sets up his millennial kingdom. Now, I'm not sure how I feel about that. And at first, when I heard him say that, I was like, oh, pooey, the book of Joel, all those places that talk about the blood flowing to the horse's bridles, and you're right in the middle of the book of Revelation. I think it's Revelation 14 or 13. And I said, no, no, that's it. And I was thinking, he's nitpicking about this, you know, because... Um, and one of his students even raised their hand and said, don't you think maybe this, basically they're going to be right next to each other, the final battle and the battle of Armageddon. So what difference does it make if God destroys 
if that blood that goes to the horse's bridles, that's a lot of blood, by the way, uh, <laughs> when God destroys the Antichrist forces, if it happens at the Battle of Armageddon or right afterwards, it's probably just about the same time. He says, no, 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 he says, and he prevents, and I listened to him. I agreed with the student who raised their hands. I listened to him. I thought, you know what? He's making a lot of sense. Well, think about it. that's a lot of blood. That's that means the blood is so high. It's probably like um, six or seven feet high, a river of blood. When Jesus Christ destroys Satan's forces in the final battle, or at, right after the final battle, he really he he said he talked about. It. So I thought, you know what? I need to to get. I need to sign up for this course. See, his lectures are pretty. They don't, his lectures are good, but I want, I, I said, I'm going to sign up for the course because I want the, the materials, the course materials, so I can read all the books that they recommend. And so I already, last night I signed up and I took, I did lessons one and two. They, they were easy. They're a piece of cake. I, I'm making straight hundreds. This is not an accredited course, by the way. And I can see why. It's a piece of cake. But but the course materials are worth signing up for the course to get the course materials. And so here, I actually happen to have John Walvoord's book on Revelation, which is one of the course materials. They weren't able to offer it, but I already had it. So I said, I'm going to go read that. Then they offered another, for lesson two, they offered another course material where another guy who's got like a PhD from Dallas, he, he got a really detailed outline. He says, I'm going to read him next. So basically, I signed up for the course to get all the course materials because I want my Silver Skies ending to be as close as possible to what's really going to happen in the tribulation. And I feel that Dallas Theological Seminary and Dr. Andy Woods are the best, and Dr. Arnold Fruchtenbaum are the best when it comes to interpreting Bible prophecy. Though I... I would say in the one I, so far, the Bible teacher that I feel is the most accurate about what's going to happen in Revelation is Dr. Andy Woods. Next, I would go with Dr. Stanley Toussaint, and then I would go with Arnold Fruchtenbaum. But I'm not even limiting myself to them. I've been listening to Chuck Missler. I've been listening to some other teachers. That Chuck Missler is the one who made me aware that Revelation chapter 10 well, he said something interesting, Chuck Missler said. He said, I disagree with uh, with some people that feel the can biblical canon is closed because of Revelation chapter 10. And I thought, this is interesting because Jesus has been speaking to me and my men. And and all, all the all the you know, all the respected evangelical teachers like John MacArthur or John, I mean the ones that I think, you know, are fairly decent in Bible interpretation, um, 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 Andy Woods, Arnold Fruchtenbaum, they all feel the canon's closed. And one of their basis, basis for that argument is Revelation 22, I think it's 18 and 19, which says that if you add to or subtract from the words of the book of this prophecy, you will get the, the plagues that are in this book. And I'm thinking, wait a minute, folks, Revelation 22, 18 and 19 is talking about the, the words of the book of this prophecy. It's referring to the book of Revelation. And there, John MacArthur is trying to say that 22, 18, and 19 is referring to the entire Bible. So basically, their argument using 22, 18, and 19 as the basis for an argument that, that the canon's closed isn't going to work. Having said that, I will say you need to be very, very careful about claiming you're adding to the biblical canon. Because, you know, anybody can get a vision out there. I could be, Satan loves to counterfeit Jesus, so anybody could get a vision. So I respect, I deeply respect any Bible teacher that feels the canon is closed. But Revelation 10 is intriguing. Chuck Missler said, that Revelation 10, 4, which says that where the angel, they most Bible scholars feel that that angel that has its left foot, or right foot on the sea, one foot on the sea, one foot on the land, is the angel Gabriel. Some people think it's Jesus Christ, and it's not worth splitting a church over. I personally think it's the angel Gabriel. Um, 
and Dr. Toussaint and Andy Woods would probably agree with me. Uh, Angel Gabriel uh, be simply, it's too complicated to go here. I, I will say this much. If you are interested in my Bible studies, which are on a very scholarly level, by the way, I mean, because I really want to be accurate in the last part of my novel. So I'm actually researching Revelation and Daniel. I know Daniel really well. Um, researching Daniel, I've already, let me tell you how much I've done on Revelation my whole life. I read Dr. Peter Ruckman's commentary, but I no longer agree with him because he's a King James Bible only person and Jesus has gotten me out of that. But Dr. Ruckman was right on one thing. Because he's so obsessed with literal interpretation, even though he limits his literal interpretation of the King James, he got a lot of stuff about Revelation right. So I still remember all the stuff I read from his Revelation commentary. Now, um, I've been listening for the past several years. I've been studying Dr. Andy Woods, um, D John MacArthur. Uh, let's see. And I, I'm I'm listening to Chuck Missler. I'm listening to uh, now. I'm listening to Dr. Stanley Tusey, and I'm coming to my own conclusions about the best interpretation of Revelation. I think Andy Woods is the best so far, and he's got a 75 video series on Revelation, and I'm going to listen to every stinking video in his series. Um, I'm also going to take the the Dallas Theological Seminary Revelation course. And um, I'm also reading several books written by Jewish rabbis because my main character is a rabbi. He's a conservative rabbi. I already finished one by, doc, by Rabbi Daniel Gordas, who is currently living in Israel. He moved there from America. I was very moved by that. Um, so I'm doing, putting so much research into this book. But go check out my website, gabrielchana.blog. And I'm doing some pretty, pretty in-depth scholarly posts on my Bible study in the book of Revelation and my study of Jude Judaism. See, I have to know, I am I wasn't raised Jewish, even though I'm half King David, so I'm doing research on Judaism so that I can portray my rabbi believably. You say, you're writing a love story. Why do you need to do all this? Well, the way the love story is set up, the lovers can't get together until they win the Jewish nation to the Messiah. <laughs> you see? They're going to be instrumental in that. So it, when I write the plot, I need to make it believable that they are able to, either they fail or not, or they, they, they have to play a role in the salvation of the Jewish nation. Now, what's really, really funny is Revelation 10. If they don't do that, they can't get married. That's the way I've got the plot set up. That's why I had to do all this research. Now, Revelation 10 is very interesting. As a result of doing all this research, and I got intrigued by what Chuck Missler said. Chuck Missler said in Revelation 10, 4, that um, the angel tells the apostle John, he says, he says, he says, here's the little book, and the, there were seven th peals of thunder that proclaimed what was inside the little book. And then he told John, don't write it down. Bible scholars have been debating about why in the world did the angel, and I think it was angel Gabriel, tell John, not the apostle John who wrote the book of Revelation, why did he tell him not to write it down? So, and I think I know the answer. I think that little book that the angel held in Revelation 10 was my Bible for Tribulation Saints and my videos and all my books, maybe even Silver Skies, because I Jesus said my Silver Skies is a prophecy, which means I'm probably going to end up, probably the way I work out the plot in Silver Skies for what's going to happen in the book of Revelation is going to be how it's actually going to happen. <laughs> so... That's what I think. Jesus already told me my novel Silver Skies is a prophecy. And I think he was referring to the 1996 version, not the crappy one I wrote and the, the crappy rewrite I did of my 1990s version in 2013. So I am putting, I am really, really, really working hard on this book. You see, 
when I read the 1990s version, and this was after I'd almost forgot all about, I couldn't put it down. And then when I got to the, to the very end of what I had done, I thought, why didn't you finish this thing? I want to find out what's going to happen next. You know what? Back in the 1990s, when I worked on Silver Skies, I thought, this is the only book I'm going to write. It's to honor the great love between me and Brent. And I actually gave myself the equivalent of a master's of, of fine arts in creative writing to, to work on that novel. That's why it's so stinking good. And I'm going back and relearning all of the skills. But I do remember that I told myself, when you get to the last part of this novel, you're going to have to stop and do some more research. You're going to have to research on the tribulation. You're going to have to research on what it would be like to live in Israel or Petra during that time. Um, you say, why Petra? Well, I believe that the, the Jewish nation is going to escape to Petra when the Antichrist breaks his covenant in the middle of the week or the seven years. That's the seven-year tribulation, and they have to flee for their lives. The Bible states, and I believe it's in the book of Zechariah, that two-thirds of the Jewish nation will die off. They're going to have the worst Holocaust ever. What's going to happen to the Jews in the tribulation is going to make what Hitler did to them seem like a picnic. That's how bad it's going to be. And I really, um, you might say, oh, God is such a meanie that he would do this. Well... If they would accept their Messiah, Jesus would come and rescue them. So you can't really say God's being a meanie. In fact, in fact, one of the main things that my um, ra my rabbi actually accepts Jesus as his Messiah about halfway through the novel. So the last half of the novel, he's just trying to get together with his lover. It's, a, it's mainly a romance, but it's got a subplot that involves the salvation of the Jewish nation. And so um, all I can say is the amount of research that I have to do to make this novel accurate prophetically and believable is I'm probably giving myself the, the equivalent of a master's degree in, um, I would call it Jewish studies at a Christian the theological seminary. Now Dallas Theological Seminary doesn't offer a master's degree, from what I understand, in that specific area. But I'm probably giving myself the equivalent of a master's or maybe even a PhD <laughs> in Jewish, Christian Jewish studies and the book of Revelation, if there is such a degree. I mean, that is how much research I'm putting in this book, which might be why Jesus says it's going to be a prophecy. You might say, well, there's lots of schools that teach Revelation. Yeah, but most of them, what they teach you is a bunch of crap, man. I mean, and what's really interesting is I'm doing research for, uh, um, you know, on the rabbi, and I'm reading a book by Joseph Telushkin um, about Jewish literacy. It's basically, it's about a 700-page book. And I've already started reading it, and I'm in the section where he's going through the Jewish Bible, the Torah, right now. That's like the first five books of Moses. And um, some of his interpretation, you, you've got to read my posts. I'm actually, I've got, I have, I have posts at my website uh, that are at graduate school level as far as thought theology. <laughs> I'm serious. I have serious, man. That's how much, that's how deep I'm going into the Bible to make sure that my silver skies will be accurate prophetically. Oh, that's Trump. He's always trying to get money from me. I, I just, I don't know how to get him off my phone. I'm going to work just ignore him. So, um, so anyways, all I can say is you've got to go to my website and read my posts. Um, oh, by the way, my husband, Brent Spiner, and yes, he, he considers himself, he calls me his wife, and I call him my husband, even though we're not together yet. He is a student at Dallas Theological Seminary. And when he first studied there, he said, you got to go to my website and read my post. It's really interesting about, if you've got any interest in Bible prophecy, you've got to read my post. Plus, Jesus said 
that my novel Silver Skies is going to be a prophecy. So apparently my interpretation of Revelation is right on. It's probably the way it's really going to play out. So if you want to know the future, read Bible for Tribulation Saints. But I'm, I'm jumping all over the place. First of all, Revelation 10. Here's what I've got a post on Revelation 10 at my website where I go into detail on why I believe that I am the subject of Revelation 10. I'm also in Zechariah 9.15 and in Isaiah 57.9. It's too complicated to explain on video. Go read my website. I have got a first class website and I, I, I'm, a, I'm a blogger. I blog every day. I put posts up. I will have a link to my blog posts underneath this video. You need to follow me at my website, folks, If you, because I actually post more at my website than I do making YouTube videos. And um, I post about everything there. Uh, Jesus told me not to make any videos about politics, but sometimes I will discuss a little bit of politics at my website and at my Facebook page. So I post a lot at my website. So if you really, really want to follow me, go to gabrieltona.blog. And I'm doing a lot of posts right now about Judaism, about deep Bible studies and Bible prophecy, because this is part of my research. And some of the stuff that I've concluded about Revelation 10, I believe that that little book that that angel was holding in Revelation 10 is my Bible for Tribulation Saints. Yes. I believe that, and my videos, and possibly includes my novel Silver Skies, which is go which is going to be a prophecy. And the reason he told John not to write about it is because imagine how people back in John ta John's time would feel if they read my Bible for Tribulation Saints back then. It wouldn't make any sense to them. And another reason is God didn't want Satan to know that I was the subject of Revelation 10. Because if Satan knew that, you know, he already tried to kill me when I was born. I almost died my first month of birth. The Jesuits did genetic profiling and they realized I was half King David. That was enough to get Satan interested in me. I've been a victim of anti-Semitism my whole life because of that. So you've got to read this post. It's, if you have even a modicum of Bible knowledge and you read what I have discovered about Revelation 10, you're probably going to be convinced too that I am the subject. I'm that little book in Revelation 10. Revelation 10 is the, the shortest chapter in Revelation. So apparently God wanted to kind of hide this. You know, he didn't want to draw too much attention to this because if Satan caught on, he would have killed me as a baby. He almost did kill me, by the way. But I guess he decided to let me live because I had a mother who wasn't Christian and he figured I wouldn't end up you know, be, being a threat to him. Though he didn't completely give up on me. Those King David genes made Satan nervous. So, but once I accepted Christ as my Savior at age 14, 14, that is, an, uh, that is a, a number that's significant in the Bible. Uh, you just got to check out my post. <laughs> oh, boy. Revelation 10, I believe, is about my Bible for tribulation sins. I'm the little book that John was instruct. John ate the book and it tasted like honey in his mouth and it turned to, it became sour in his stomach. Jesus told me in, by, that I'm like the prophet Ezekiel. Did you know Ezekiel, I think it's in Ezekiel chapter 3, did the same thing that John did in Revelation 10. He ate a little book and it turned to honey in his mouth and <laughs> check out Revelation 10 I in fact I'm here in brain to brain that I did such a scholarly job on Revelation 10 that they're now actually um, teaching a class on it at the seminaries at some of the like Dallas seminary that's theological seminary on my interpretation of Revelation 10 Revelation 10 has stumped Bible scholars. They don't understand why that angel Gabriel, I think it was Gabriel, told John not to talk about the contents of the little book. 
That little book, I believe, is my Bible for Tribulation Saints in Revelation 10. So I'm in the Bible, folks. I'm in Revelation 10. I'm in Zechariah 9.15. My birthday is 9.15.57. Zechariah 9.15 is about the sling stones person who defeats, who has a major victory in battle. Zechariah 9.15. Jesus said that I and my men would defeat the Jesuits. Maybe that's it. Maybe when that happens, Revelation 9.15 is going to be fulfilled. Revelation 9.15, I believe, is also talking about the final battle in, in tribulation. I'm, I'm going to be there, too, as part of Christ's army coming down from heaven as part of his bride. So I, I'm going to be involved probably in all the fulfillments of Revelation. I mean, Zechariah 9.15. I'm in Isaiah 57.9. Isaiah 57, 9, especially in the King James Bible, talks about um, messengers and uh, it, it seems to be a condemnation of human cloning. And I have that discussed at my website. If you want to read up all the posts that are on certain subjects at my website, on my website, on the right-hand side, if you scroll down, there's like a blank line where you can search for topics at my website because I've, I've written practically an encyclopedia there. Just put in the name of the topic in the search bar, then hit return, and then my website will pull up all the pages, all the posts that I've written on that topic. So go to my website and just search up any topics that interest you and just go to the right-hand side. There's like a, 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 a place where you can search through my website for different topics and my website will just pull it up and um, I also have my website set up where my favorite bloggers there's other bloggers out there to like to, that I like to read um, and if you at the very top of my website if you check out the links you can check out the different people that I follow every day the people that I like to read that I think have something intelligent to say um, you know so you can uh, check that out too so if you really want to get to know me, you need to go to my website. So that's on Revelation 10. And um, like I said, I've started the Dallas Theological Seminary course on Revelation, which I'm sure I'm going to pass with flying colors. I've made straight hundreds so far. <laughs> like I told you, the amount of research that I am doing for this book is like the equivalent of a master's degree thesis or a, or, or a PhD dissertation. That's how deep I'm going. So this Silver Skies 1996 uh, version, when it comes out, you know that I've done my work, man. You say, why are you working so hard on this? You don't make any money from your writing. I don't write for money. Jesus takes care. I, I see myself as a missionary for Jesus, and I see my writings as my missionary enterprise. I personally believe that Revelation 10 is about the salvation of the nation of Israel during the tribulation and that I am the instrument that God is going to use to bring that about. That those Jewish people are going to be listening to my videos, they're going to be reading my books, and they're going to be reading my Bible for Tribulation Saints, and that is going to play a key role and why the entire Jewish nation accepts Jesus as their Messiah. Because in Revelation 10, the angel has got one foot on the land, one foot on the sea. The land in the Bible often symbolizes the Jewish nation. The sea often symbolizes the Gentile world. And this nation is holding a little book, and he's got one foot on the land, one foot on the sea. What I think that means, and I wrote this in my blog post, is that, and he's holding a little book, is that God is going to use my writings, my YouTube videos, my life testimony, including Bible for Tribulation Saints, possibly Silver Skies 1996 version, as the instrument that will win the Jewish nation, where the entire nation will be saved. It's in Zechariah. It talks about it all over the place. It's all over the Bible. The Jewish nation will come to the Messiah. Two-thirds of them are going to die off in the tribulation. One-third will be left. They're, they're going to be a righteous remnant of Jews from the nation of Israel and probably all over the world 
that will comprise the Jewish nation in the tribulation, they will accept Yeshua HaMashiach as their Messiah, as a nation. The entire nation will. And I'm going to play a role in that, which is why the, the angel Gabriel is standing with one foot on the land, that signifies the Jewish nation, one foot on the sea, the Gentile world, holding my, the little book which re represents me as the instrument that causes Jews and Gentiles to become one in Jesus. Because the, right at the very end of Revelation 10, the seventh trumpet sounds. And right before the seventh trumpet sounds, at the beginning of chapter 11, it says, now is the time. The time has run out. Now is the time that everything is finished that all the nations come to Jesus. That's how the, that's how Revelation 10 ends. So I just, you got to read my blog post. <laughs> that's kind of exciting though. I am now convinced that I am the instrument. I and my men are the instrument that Jesus is going to use to win the Jewish nation to the Messiah. And that's why he's devoted so much. That's why I'm in the Bible. <laughs> yep. I'm in Zechariah 9.15, Isaiah 57.9, Revelation 10. They're going to be reading my novel, Silver Skies. They're going to be reading my Bible for Tribulation Saints. They're going to be watching my videos. And the entire Jewish nation will come to the Messiah after the, as a result of having read all that stuff and followed me. It's going to take them a while, though. It's going to take them seven years. The first three and a half years, they will, they're will they going to have a deal with the Antichrist. And because of that deal, they won't be coming to Jesus. But when he breaks his covenant with them, when he breaks his promise, because he's a traitor, and he starts killing off the Jews en masse, they're going to start rethinking some of their positions. They're going to be going, they're going to start researching my writings. They're going to be listening to my videos. And... As a result of that, just before, it's almost too late. Now, I don't want to give you too many details. It's not just my writings, but they're going to play a significant role in the, in the Jewish nation's salvation. Basically, my writings are going to, going to illuminate their minds and help them to see the truth on everything that's happening around them. And they're going to realize that they are fulfilling the prophecy. You see, the problem with the Jews... And this is something that I've learned from studying Judaism. Is they don't know their Bible very well. Even their own rabbis don't know their Bible very well. They don't. Like, like Joseph Telushkin, he's a rabbi. He was trained at an Orthodox Jewish school. His interpretation of some parts of Genesis is really wild and loose. Like, he had a section in there where he where he said that he thinks that Sarah, Sarah got mad at Abraham when, you know, when Abraham tried to sacrifice Isaac. And then God said, no, 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 don't do that. So I was just testing you, you know. But he, he, he thinks Sarah was angry at Abraham. And his basis for that is he says, he says, seven verses later after this happened, she died. And I'm thinking, oh, my goodness. That is the most terrible Bible exegesis. Just because it was seven verses later that she died doesn't mean she died right away. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. These Jewish people don't know their Bible. It's like, I'm thinking, okay, she was 90 years old when she gave birth to Isaac, okay? 90 years old. You don't have to be a deep Bible student to figure that out. So using logic, that means she was probably 100 to 105 when Abraham tried to offer Isaac on the altar, okay? Because he was a young boy. So, and the Bible says she died when she was 100, I think it was 127 years old. And he's saying just because it was seven verses later, this is even an esteemed rabbi in the Jewish community. And he's got this, I'm thinking, good grief, it's no wonder the Jews don't accept Jesus as their Messiah. They can't even tell from studying the Bible that he fulfills all the, pro all the promises in the Torah, 
in the Jewish Bible, you know, the Navim, the Tanakh. That's what they call their Bible, all these different sections. And I'm saying he, he fulfills all the prophecies. But because they practice such loose and fat, Sarah was 127 years old when she died. Okay, Isaac was offered on the altar at about, when she was about 100, 105. So she died about 22 years after this happened. So she didn't die seven verses later. She didn't die, die right away after Abraham offered Isaac on the altar. Now, I'm not saying you should go off of your kids on the altar. Actually, God stopped it. And there are many, many verses in the Bible where he condemns offering kids on the altar to false gods, which the Jews ended up doing later. So, but this is what I'm trying to say is Jewish people don't know their Bible very well. <laughs> the average graduate of a seminary like Dallas Theological Seminary, if you pitted them up against a graduate of a Jewish seminary and compared their Bible knowledge, the Christians would win. <laughs> Do you know what's wrong with Judaism? They're, they're going into tradition. They're, they have substituted the Bible with Jewish tradition. And that's why they're so confused. <laughs> but anyways, I've got posts about what I think about all this stuff that I'm learning in my research. So anyways, folks, um, go check out my blog. I've got fascinating scholarly research in there that, I, like I said, I've started the Dallas Theological Seminary course in Revelation, and it's too easy. <laughs> but I don't regret I signed up for the course because some of the background, the books they recommend you read for backup, that's where I'm going to be going into, going real deep. The course is helping me, but it's a piece of cake. <laughs> it's too easy. But I don't regret I signed up for it because already, I like yesterday, I found a really scholarly research on the entire book of Revelation. I'm going to read. I put that on my Kindle. I'm going to read that whole thing from cover to cover. So I'm basically I just signed up for the course so I can get really deep into Revelation. And Dr. Stanley Toussaint, he's a really good Bible. He's a really good professor. I mean, he's really making me think. So check out my website, folks. I've got some fascinating stuff in there. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, uh, despite the fact that Lori McBride tries to portray me as the crazy lady, I'm actually, according to Jesus, I'm the smartest woman on the planet. <laughs> um, and, like I said, I've given myself like the equivalent of a master's of fine art and creative writing to write my novel. And now I'm giving myself about the equivalent of a PhD or master's degree in theology in regard to Jewish studies and the book of Revelation. So if you're interested in knowing the truth about the Bible, and if you want to know what my theological positions are, it's very close to Dallas Theological Seminary. So if you go to my Facebook page, I actually I think I have a link to Schaefer Theological Seminary, which is Dr. Andy Wood's school. He's a graduate of Dallas, by the way. My theological position is very dispensational, pre-mill, pre-trib. And um, I don't believe in this amillennial Roman Catholic garbage. <laughs> I'm not saying there are good people in that school, but they, there are so many Bible blockheads in the world. <laughs> and oh, by the way, my sister is a Bible blockhead. It's not that she's stupid, but she doesn't care about the Bible. She obviously doesn't care about the Bible because she hangs around with Lori McBride. So folks, go check out my blog post. If you're a lover of truth, and if you love the Bible, and if you want an accurate interpretation of Bible prophecy, future events, which isn't going to be far off, guys. It's close, man. Well, Jesus said the Antichrist already on the scene. Well, we don't have long to go, folks. You need to know what's in Bible prophecy. You need to get smart, man, because if not, the devil's going to dupe you good.